if you were to grab a, like a ball or any different type of object, if you were to grab that ball and put it on a string, and then swung it around you, like so, what would happen to the path of the ball? In most cases, it would swing around you, so it would go in a circular path around you. But now if I told you I were to take uh, scissors and cut that string, so now I'm cutting the string itself, what will happen to the path of the ball now that there's no more string involved? And you might realize that the actual path will change. It won't go in a circle anymore. It'll actually go pretty much in a straight line from there on. Now there's two questions. First of all, why did it go in a circle? So why was there a circle motion in the first place? And the second question is, why did the path change once we actually cut the string? So why did the path change? And those two things is what we're going to discuss in this video itself. We're going to talk about circular motion. Because the dot point says, analyze, I'm going to use a different color, and analyze the forces involved in uniform circular motion for a range of objects, including satellites orbiting the Earth. So we're going to talk about an example of the ball and string and satellites orbiting the Earth itself. And we're going to talk about uniform circular motion. But before we start, we want to make sure we go over Newton's first law, because that's quite important for this kind of concept. And Newton's first law says objects which move at a constant velocity so objects move at a constant velocity unless there is a force acting on the object. And so, for example, if there were no friction and no air resistance, a car would always move at the same velocity because there's no force acting on it. So there has to be a force acting on it for it to change its direction or its velocity. And in this case, so how does this relate to circular motion? Well, here we have that same scenario. Here we have the green would be our person. The white would be our string that's holding the ball. This yellow would be the path, so the path that the ball is taking. And, you know, you have your ball moving, so this use it maybe orange. So the ball itself move for this path as long as there's a string. Right? They'll move for this path, not for this year, not yet. I'm actually, I'll erase this just to confuse you. But right now it's moving for a circular path. Now how would that be possible? Why doesn't it go straight? And the reason why is because of Newton's first law. Because it says that it's going to go for, have constant velocity unless there's a force acting on it. So it would usually always go straight because the direction and velocity, a velocity has a, is a vector, so it has a direction and magnitude, we should be going straight, but because there's actually a force acting on it, which in this case is the force of the string, that string is actually pulling it, even though it wants to go this way, the string is pulling it that way, it's pulling it down. Instead of going straight, what it's going to do, it's going to go in a circle. It's going to go in a circle. At every point, usually, we want to go straight. But at every point, there's that force being pu pulled on it from the string. So instead of going straight, it's going to go in that path at every single point. Right? So this is what it would usually want to do. But actually, because of that force being applied by the string, it's going to go straight instead. And it's going to go in that circular path instead. So that's important. Newton's first law is important. Now, what would happen if there were no strings? So if we cut that string... Well, if we cut the string, that means we also cut the force. And if we cut the string, so now I've cut the string, there's no more string. I'm going to remove all that. There's no more string. And that means that this path changes. There's no more circular path in general, because now there's no more string. And this will now move at a constant velocity and just in a straight line. So now it's going to move just straight, because there's no more force acting on it. And so force is important, and when it comes to, this is called the centripetal force, the centripetal force, that was the force acting on the string, was that centripetal force, and as soon as we release the force, as soon as there's no more force, the actual ball itself will move in a straight path, because that's the, that's the way it wants to do it, because according to Newton's first law, that's what it wants to do, the only reason why it's not doing that is because that force that was applied, and as soon as we remove that force, that means we remove the actual circular motion. Now, so it says analyze the force involved in uniform circular motion. Well, there's that centripetal force, which was acting down. And we've got the velocity, which was going in a tangent straight. And because of those two forces, we have that 
circular path. But as soon as that centripetal force is cut, then it's going to go back into its normal tangent path. And the actual formula for this is force equals, so this is centripetal force, equals mass times velocity squared divided by radius. Which makes sense because the further this, so if it's the radius, the further the radius is out, so for example, if you had the radius being here, so this is the radius being longer, that just meant you had to apply more force for it to move at the same, same speed. So the shorter the actual radius, the less force you need to put into it. Now this is with the centripetal force, so for circular motion, but we also have to, to, look, to look at the actual acceleration. Because if you remember Newton's second law, Newton's second law was force equals mass times acceleration. So this is saying, so we have the centripetal force, and we have the mass given, that means we can also find an acceleration. And this might not look like it's accelerating, it might look like it's always going at the same speed. But what you should remember is that in this case it's always changing, like you know, the actual acceleration has a magnitude, but it also has a direction, because it's a vector force. And at every single point this path, direction is changing. It's not going in a straight path. The actual direction is changing, which means the actual object also has an acceleration, because acceleration is both magnitude and direction, and the direction is always changing. So if we have the force that we can calculate, if we have the centripetal force, and we have the mass, we can calculate the acceleration. So I'm going to give you a quick example. So for example, if we have, again, we first we'll do, we calculate the centripetal force, and after that we'll calculate the centripetal acceleration. So if we have a ball which weighs 500 grams, we have a string which has a radius of 2 meters, and its velocity is 20 meters per second, and we can put all that in that formula to get our centripetal force. What would, he, would we get for centripetal force? Well, first we have to just do, okay, well, the ball weighs 500 grams, that same, so if that's in kilograms, that would be 0 0.5 kilograms times the velocity squared, so 20 meters per second squared, so 20 meters per second squared is the same as 400, and then divide that by our length of our radius, which would be 2 meters, so that's 2 meters. If you put that in your calculator, you get 0 0.5 times 400 divided by 2 equals 100. So that means this would be going 100, so I'm going to write 100, 100 newtons. So you have applied 100 newtons to make that happen. That's what that means. That's how much newtons you have to to make it go in that circular path. Now that we have the actual Newtons, what we can do is we can apply the next part, which is the have the force, so have Fc, which is the centripetal force, equals mass times the centripetal acceleration, which is that. So now we're trying to get this, we're trying to get the centripetal acceleration. We have the force, which was 100 Newton, and we have the mass, which was 0.5. And we want acceleration, so we can put the mass over, which means it's what we have left is 100 newtons. We've just rearranged it. 100 newtons divided by 0 0.5 equals our acceleration, and that would be, oops, oops, <laughs> that would be 0 0.5 divided by 100 divided by 0 0.5 equals 200. So 200 meters per second is our acceleration. 200 meters per second per second. So now we've calculated acceleration. That's how we can get acceleration. And it's saying that we should talk about orbits, not just about the one, but also about satellites. Well, satellites, we don't, we don't have a string that has it attached, but we do have an actual force, and that was called gravity. So if you remember, there's gravity acting on this, so the mass of the Earth itself, the mass of the Earth is causing a gravitational attraction, and that gravitational attraction will actually keep 
will pull on the satellite. And that's the reason why satellites go in an orbit. Not because of that string, but because of the gravity itself. And the gravity pulls on the, on the satellite, which is why it's not going to go, the satellite wants to go this way. But it can't because it's constantly being pulled on the, satellite, on the actual, on itself because the, the Earth itself is pulling on it. So instead of going straight, it's just going to go in a round circle at all times. And that's, yeah, that's what the actual forces involved when it comes to the Earth and satellites. So if the centripetal force, we call it FC, that was applied by gravity from the Earth itself, and the satellite will therefore go in an orbit, a circular orbit around it, as long as the force is strong enough, instead of going straight, which it wants to, but it can't because of that centripetal force. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.